Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas for Amazon Web Services, AWS reInvent, their conference that's changing the world. It's all about the cloud. Uh, Amazon is just absolutely doing great. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm here with special guest Jerry Chen, who's a general partner at Greylock Partners, venture capital firm. Um, tier one, some people say, tier <laughs> one, looking at all the hot deals. So, you know, great firm, great, great bunch of guys over there. Jerry Chen, the new minted partner over there. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks, John, always a pleasure to be here. I love when people say tier one, tier two VC. It's just, I roll my eyes on that. It's like, come on, who's keeping track of what a tier is? <laughs> you know, you're either good or you're not. So it's, certain it's deals are- Fire by storage, just tier one storage, tier two storage. <laughs> I just want SSDs, I want an SSD VC. Uh, you know, low latency, high fast. power, fast. You know, really awesome. Good for transactions, great for cost, of, <laughs> cost per cost per venture. Seriously, welcome back. Thanks, it's, it's great, hey, congratulations to theCUBE. All these years, been working with you from uh, my previous life to now. It's amazing what you guys have done. Any show that's relevant um, has a cube, you know, and it's a great sign. Well, you know, Jerry, we're, you know, we love digital. We're in, we're in all the R&D crowd chat you're very familiar with. We love digital. We got our eyes on this digital transformation. And it's a lot like Amazon, right? This whole world's changing. Yep. And what's really exciting is a new guard of, of companies. New yep. brands are emerging. Docker is one that you've invested in your first investment. You know, we joked last year here on theCUBE, Jerry, when are you going to you know, get going, pop one out, your first, and you know, you, you. not bad. Thank it, you, well, um, it's, it's so early for both uh, Docker, the company, the open source ecosystem, I think Ben Golub said it's, it's 18 months old, right? And, and I invested about a year ago, right after I saw you, and the past year has just been incredible, and both from the, not only the development of the open source community, but the past year, you've been all these shows, Red Hat, IBM, VMware, Microsoft, Amazon, um, pretty much every single cloud provider is embracing Docker and, and making Docker the, the de facto element of the cloud. And so, I mean, I think everyone here in this, this conference and myself am very bullish on what this can become. And so, um, I'm happy to be part of the ride and watch yeah. Solomon and Ben just drive. It's great to see you, young gun in the VC community. I mean, not super young, but I mean, relative <laughs> to the other VCs. I mean, you made that first investment, you're the lead investor in Docker, and then they raised three rounds in like six months. You know, could be a record, I don't know. Uh, but last year, you made a comment to me, I think we were walking the hallways. You're like, John, what do you think? I'm like, Amazon's kicking ass, yep. taking names, it's a tsunami. Who's going to put the seawall up? And I think your comment was, whoever can build Amazon for the enterprise will win it all. So it's interesting, that's not happening. But Docker is a unifying yep. opportunity yep. that brings some solidarity with the developer community. I think what you're seeing, um, so a couple things have happened in the past year since we last spoke. I think I remember some last year that um, Amazon was trying to be one thing for all people, and OpenStack at the time, you're asking, it was trying to be all things to all people. In the past year, I think, in the public cloud space especially, Google and Microsoft Azure have you know, made huge investments um, technically and marketing-wise and trying to like, close that gap with AWS. We're still far ahead, but trying to close that gap. At the same time, VMware and kind of that Red Hat, the private cloud um, stalwarts, are trying to catch up as well. And what all those players see, Docker as, that unit, like currency or transport to say, oh my goodness, if now my application really is that portable and um, that delightful to use, I can reasonably have an Amazon, Google, Azure, VMware, Red Hat based options that all work and look and feel the same. And I think Docker's kind of unlocking that value for the first time. Yeah, and DevOps really was the indicator that, yep. that okay, dev guys don't want to be infrastructure dudes, yep. and that was all kind of laid out there. Everyone saw that, but no one actually had anything. Yeah. Right? So Docker was really, not a new concept from a container standpoint, but really bringing it together yeah. and making developers, okay, all those dependencies, all those steps, all those hassles go away, and it's a rallying cry, right? Yep. So, do you expect that to like just explode more growth the enablement side, have you looked at that? Do you guys talk about that in board meetings? 
And we talk about the growth, I mean we track all the numbers from the open source community, developer community, the partner community, and like every wave of technology, it's you know, bigger and greater and faster than the previous one. So I think Docker is just the beneficiary of, look, years and years of container technology from Linux containers, Laris containers, but VMware I think pioneered kind of the idea of running in isolated portable boxes, right? Virtual machines then. And then I think OpenStack kind of like led the concept, we need uh, open source scale out cloud for the next generation. And then Docker just riding on both of those um, pioneering efforts to say, you know, the right way to build that next gen cloud is with Docker. All right, so now the personal question, are you doing more deals or are you just kind of like trying not to <laughs> screw up Docker? Uh, look, <laughs> definitely trying you know, to let those guys run and not, not get too much in the way of, of Ben and Solomon. But um, yeah, so I just joined uh, a second board of a security company with my partner, Shim Chanda. We incubated with, with uh, an EIR, uh, Michael Callahan, that you know. Yep. And so uh, I'm lucky to work with him. Michael is just a world-class talent. He's a former founder, CTO of another Greylock company. And we haven't uh, announced it publicly yet in terms of what it is, but I'm working closely with Ashim and Michael trying to incubate this new idea. I've been so, I've been so going through. One you, know, you know he's my neighbor, so I've been going yes. through his trash looking <laughs> yes. for business plans. I'm like, where's the, where's the emails? Well, I told Michael to throw out fake business plans, <laughs> so to throw you off the scent. But uh, no, we'll I have my be, kids go through it, so I don't get caught. Perfect. No, I'm only kidding. We'll be uh, talking more about that in, in the near future. Jerry, you're really a nice guy. People like you a lot. Do you find that being a VC has changed your uh, persona a bit? I mean, you've always been kind of a smart guy, but certainly happy-go-lucky. People like working with you. Sure. Um, you got to say no a lot, entrepreneurs, yep. people that are your friends. Yep. Um, does, that change, does that change your um, demeanor? Made you more tougher, more East Coast-like? Oh, goodness. Well, I was born on the East Coast. I would say, um, look, you've known me a while, so hopefully you'll say no. Um, I'm still the same person at core. So two things, one, even when I say no to investment, I try to be helpful, right? That every interaction is, uh, even when we don't have a long-term investment, is still useful in that interaction. Number two, you just be honest about it and quick, right? It's like, we're not going to invest with a company of the friend, you just say, it's not for us. And rather than like, string along people or just look for excuses, you just be a little more or versus direct. going through that book of excuses, oh, like Correct. rotate, you know, you know excuse, so excuse I, 117, it's early for us. Yeah, or, it, it, yeah not a good you fit. Just, you, just or, told, you just say why, you just be a little more um, yeah. forthright. You say, you know, yeah, just say, I don't believe you guys. I don't think <laughs> you can do it. Market's too small, prove me otherwise. I mean, and honesty anyway. is the best policy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easiest, right? It's, it's not only the best, because it's also easier too, personally. Yeah. My personal experience, not everyone's the same way, and who knows, and in three years from now, it might be very different. Okay, so I got to ask you, Ryan was on from, uh, from Storm, great, great investor, great guy. He had some good points. He said, you know, developers are nervous about the pass layer. Now he's investing a lot in OpenStack. Yep. That's he's betting on. He, and the reason why he said Amazon's hard because it's hard to know what the horses, what the track looks like. Yep. Um, so it's really difficult from a risk standpoint. OpenStack, pretty clear, enterprise play all the way. Yeah. And he knows that space cold. When I asked him about Cloud Foundry and some yeah. of the like ass yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, he's like, it's weird in there because that's where the lock-in is. And he says he thinks it's it's a tough area. Um, do you see that same, or do you think that's a non-issue? You know, I don't think I want to call it not lock-in. I think past things like OpenShift, Cloud Foundry, and a whole bunch of others, they're not necessarily lock-in, especially since they're open source, but they're prescriptive, right? The past layers kind of tell you how you should architect your application how you should build it, how you should scale it out, and they'll do a lot of that for you. And so what happens is, you got to trust the, the creators of that past layer of you've architected that correctly, otherwise, you know, you're not changing it. So if you trust how they build out those O's, laid out the building blocks, then you're fine. So it's not, I say, lock-in, especially the open source ones, or ones that aren't, but it's definitely prescriptive. So I got to ask you, what are you looking at now for deals? What's your investment thesis right now? Obviously you got Docker keeping you busy, and it's a great first investment. Yeah, it looks looking good off the tee, as they say in golf. Nice. Now you got to make a few more shots, make some more bets. Sure. What do you, what's your current investment thesis right now? You know, so the, the way I work, John, you, you've seen me over the years, is I have, I have the different layers of technology. I form a hypothesis or a model of the world, and I kind of test it with talking to smart people, because I don't have all the answers. And quite frankly, I'm probably wrong most of the time. And you, know, you have to keep that humility that you're always learning. Uh, and so, the couple of the hypothesis models I have in different parts of the stack, on the low level part of the stack, I am continually fascinated by what's happening with um, low level infrastructure, hardware. Like CPU clock cycles aren't getting faster, throwing more cores, right? More cores on a motherboard, which changes like power dynamic latency. We're throwing you know, terabytes of flash storage right next to CPU. 
it, I'm not a Harvard investor, but if you think about how would you rewrite Oracle or a database for a world where that is the new hardware, that's interesting. And then the next layer up, I think a lot about um, event data. So what Amazon announced today were the AWS. The what um, data? Uh, event data, time oh, okay, series data. Okay, got it. So what Amazon announced today with um, uh, Lambda is fascinating too, about how you think about processing streams of data, right? Because pretty soon, the explosion of data is not just human created data, machine created data. You know, health monitors, mobile phones, et cetera. So I think that's interesting how you rethink that layer, and obviously we're investors in Cloudera, which is at the forefront of trying to be the center of that, that data space. And then the application space, I continue to believe that different verticals will be disrupted different ways by um, mobile or, or big data, from like oil and gas to, to manufacturing, but also with, with mobile, the way you interact with your customers, with your users, changes dramatically. So the old world was web and email. Right, the new world is um, tweets, texts, in-app notifications, in-app messaging, period. And if you think about that, the way you react, the way you interact with your customer, the data you collect on your customer from all those different signals, social or not, um, is, is tremendous. And I think the old world doesn't really think about that quite well, they don't process it in the right speed, but if you get the signals from where you're at, I'm in Vegas, I'm, I'm at the Cube, I'm tweeting that, I'm posting that, there's an application, I can push the right message, the right market, uh, um, context the user at the right time, that's tremendous. And so, low level hardware transforms how you write application software at that level. Clearly Docker is the forefront of that. The data level, the amount of data coming through in a, in a stream, that's going to change how we think about um, analytics and your applications. Then, again, this explosion around mobile is fascinating, especially around uh, marketing apps, uh, in my mind, so three areas. Awesome. Among others. It's a great, great dissertation there. Awesome, we appreciate it. Uh, OpenStack, quick, quickly, yep. where are they? Is it becoming the big guys just get moving quicker? Little, little bit of a bumps in the road, yep. some people falling off the bus, if you will. Yeah, as it goes faster to kind of get, ah. get that built out. I mean, I see HP's going all in, sure, IBM's sure. in Cloud Foundry, and you got Morantis and a few other players, but there's been some consolidation. Yeah, I think you're seeing some consolidation. Um, I mean, there've been actually small, some acquisitions, Eucalyptus, MetaCloud, um, cloud scaling all within the past six months in that space. So I think what um, OpenStack's done really well is agreed on a, a lingua franca, right? The APIs, the way you talk about the cloud between all the vendors out there, it's done a great job at being that kind of way to have a conversation. So number one, that's not going anywhere anytime soon. What's been interesting to watch over the past few years is the actual um, instantiation of that dictionary, right? If, if, the, if the grammar, of, of OpenStack have been established by the foundation by all the major vendors. The grammar, how you talk about it, the, the nouns, the verbs, the syntax, the, the actual words and how you put together language has varied from vendor to vendor. And so I think what you're seeing now is um, different vendors consolidating, getting acquired, but pretty soon syntax and grammar yeah. agreed upon, vocabulary and the actual language, really bad metaphor probably. But do they got to go faster? I mean. They, I mean, look at Amazon, it's just a freight train, the horse is running away, it's secretariat, you know, it's, you know boat lengths, whatever analogy you want to use, they're sure. running away with it right now. Um, or you don't agree? Or you do know, you think they're running away with it? A year ago, I would say they're running away with it, right? I would say a year now, I'd say what Google and Microsoft have done the past year, you know, I think they have a chance to actually be relevant players in the public cloud. I think OpenStack in the private cloud um, can be that language, that lingua franca. I think going faster is always better, right, in general. I mean, yeah. look, look at what Docker's done the past year in terms of speed. But I think by design, because of the way OpenStack's organized as a, as a community, they're not, they're, they're, they're going to move at the pace they're going. And the fact they do summits every six months is kind of their forcing function to kind of move this thing forward. And so, by design, that's their pace. All right, so I got to ask you a personal question as we led this segment. Are you happy with the V-Mafia and what they're doing ah. now? There's a lot of VMware yep. uh, folks that are graduated VMware now, maturing quickly. You know, Pat Gelsinger leading the charge there, but you know, it's only like not that old of a company. I mean, people sure. now are popping out, venture capitalists, you know, other companies. Yeah, I, I think- Is there I, like a group now? I think there, look, there, there's, it's always great to come um, to reInvent or VMworld or some of these other shows where you see the alumni of the V-Mafia. So two things, one, I think Pat's doing a terrific job. What he's done the past year in terms of some of the acquisitions like AirBots, et cetera, um, he's doing great things at, at VMware. So that really makes me feel great as being an alumnus. 
but then watching um, my fellow former VMware employees out there start companies, join companies, uh, become investors, it, it's just a great, um, it's a great network and it's really nice to see your friends you know, do other interesting things and you, you had no idea they had it in them or you, you just, it's just nice to reconnect. Jerry, great to see you. Thanks for stopping by. I know you're super busy in between meetings and uh, doing deals. All the VCs, are, all the VCs are here, by the way, in Silicon Valley, where I live. I'm seeing them all over the place. I've seen them have meetings, even though they might not be advertising it. They're hunting deals down here. So, sure. good luck with your deal hunting, and congratulations on your investment in Docker. And certainly, Callahan's deal is awesome. So, congratulations, Greylock, great firm in Silicon Valley. This is the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.